Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is June the 5th, 2020. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now you have a fight taking place. It's going to be on ESPN. That's simply outrageous. Right? Even if you believed before seeing the Sylvester Stallone movie Rocky that Rocky in that movie had a chance to beat Apollo Creed the champ, even the folks who believe in Rocky have to look at this fight and have to think to themselves Felix Caraballo has really even less of a chance than Sylvester Stallone had in that original Rocky to win this fight. Understand how preposterous this fight is. Some sports books have Shakur Stevenson as a 100 to 1 favorite. If that's not enough, there's some books offshore that have Stevenson as a 200 to 1 favorite. If you're a member of the press and you are at the post-fight press conference after this one, please ask the champ at 126 pounds what he's doing, taking on opponents like this. The fact that the fight's going to be on ESPN, this really glorified exhibition, just shows you how desperate boxing is. You couldn't find a more competitive opponent than a guy who, according to the casino, loses 100 of 101 fights? It's absurd, folks. Let's talk about Felix Caraballo. Understand, he doesn't start boxing until he's 20. He has a full-time job working in a supermarket warehouse. He has a four-year-old, a three-year-old, with another baby on the way. He's 33 years old. More importantly, this is a regional fighter. Understand, his last eight fights, his last eight fights have been in his hometown. Right? Something tells me that in the world of boxing, there are quite a few fighters who would give Shakur Stevenson a bigger contest than this opponent. Let me also point out that Carabello has three fights he didn't win. Two were draws early in his career, very early. And one was a unanimous decision loss. But you know, let me also add, too, that this fight's in Las Vegas. So Caraballo has fought his last eight fights in Puerto Rico, right? Has never fought in Vegas before. He'll benefit from the fact that there isn't going to be a crowd for this fight. So he's not going to be completely overwhelmed, right? He's not going to walk into the big venue and have the big venue be sold out and realize that more than... A few hundred people are watching the fight. Okay, fair enough. But in my opinion, fights like this should really be kept in the gym. This is going to be a sparring session. Looking at films of Caraballo, he's exactly the kind of fighter that Shakur Stevenson should feast on. Understand, if Caraballo wins this fight, It'll be one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. To put 100 to 1 and 200 to 1 in some places in perspective, understand that Mike Tyson was a 42 to 1 favorite over Buster Douglas. This is more than twice those odds. Simply outrageous. Again, let's hope the boxing press confront Stevenson and ask Stevenson, when are you going to fight someone who has actually fought outside of their hometown? 
in their last eight fights. Let me just say this too. Stevenson is immensely talented. Immensely talented. Uh, you're talking about a southpaw who has blinding hand speed. He's a combination puncher. He has length. He's 5'8 at 126. He has length. He's hard to reach. He's savvy. He knows that with his speed and his length, if he throws straight punches as opposed to being way in the pocket throwing hooks, you're going to have an awfully hard time countering him. Even though he doesn't have the huge KO percentage, and that's with him fighting guys like this, right? Even though he doesn't have the huge KO percentage, and this is a 10-round fight, he does have a hammer. He's a southpaw. It's his dominant hand, the left hand, that he likes to throw to the body from distance, right? It's a hammer. He also can throw that up top. In fact, he likes to throw combinations up top. The kind of fighter who would give him a hard time. And we're just talking style-wise. I'm not sure if this fighter exists. Would be a Mike Tyson type fighter. Right? A puncher. Someone who doesn't have to match Stevenson's volume. Who comes in with a certain frequency, a certain rhythm. He can fight at a high pace, a high rhythm. So Stevenson doesn't have a chance to think, right? This fighter would have to be the one having his bobs and weaves dictate the pacing of the fight. Then he has to get inside and he has to start hitting Stevenson with very heavy shots. Right? Stevenson would have the volume on Gravante Davis. I know they're not the same weight class. Stevenson's 126. Gravante Davis is 135. Stevenson would have the volume on Gravante Davis. But when you're fighting a puncher, there is a recognition that the puncher only has to be right once. Right? And Gravante Davis is the kind of guy who is not going to be on his back foot against Stevenson. He would have the mindset that he's alpha. Right? Stevenson doesn't like to get on his back foot that much. He's at his best when he's the one pursuing you. Where he can set up shop, kind of like Vitaly Klitschko, where his length, gives him an out. In other words, Stevenson will start throwing a combination, then he'll lean back, have your punch miss, then he'll just lean forward again. When he leans forward, if he has you in the right position, he might throw that straight left hand, and again, it's a hammer to the body. Takes the wind out of an opponent's sails, right? Especially a right-handed opponent. Understand, you can't tell whether Stevenson, who throws body shots with straight punches, is going to your body or your head. By the time the opponent figures it out, that opponent has been stunned, dazed, confused, if not dropped. Understand, Stevenson has the kind of hand speed where he doesn't have to finish you off to finish the fight. If he dazes you, he's savvy. He'll then step up throw combinations, the ref will then wave it off, right? Because Stevenson's hand speed is such that a day's fighter is going to get hit with four, five, six shots. A referee will then say, okay, I've seen enough. Understand, Stevenson has traveled the world. He was in the Rio Olympics. As a teenager, he won the civil, the, excuse me, the silver medal at the Olympics, well, he already has a title inside of 20 fights. Unfortunately, rather than fight Leo Santa Cruz, he's fighting guys like this guy, a 100 to 1 underdog. 
Carabello simply doesn't have the pacing to hang with Shakur Stevenson. Again, you need a Mike Tyson guy who's bouncing, where Stevenson would have to pay some attention to what the guy's doing. Right? Couldn't just come in and say, let me flash some hand speed. Let me set him up for a straight left. Right, Stevenson would actually have to worry about the guy, and if the guy had two-handed power, like Prime Tyson. If Stevenson, at 5'8", tall for 126, had to worry about punches coming to his ribcage, had to actually move away to pick his spots, then you'd have something real here. Right, think Ray Leonard. Ray Leonard against Marvin Hagler had to deal with the knowledge that Hagler was trying to walk him down. Right? Ray would throw combinations, but Ray had to pace himself. He understood that Hagler was going to try to walk through the combinations. He understood that Hagler had a little bit of a bounce. In that fight, Hagler is the southpaw. Right? When Hagler starts fighting Southpaw after giving away the first few rounds, writing, uh, fighting right-handed. Right? Well, here, the Southpaw is Stevenson. As he comes up through the ranks, and keep in mind, I'm talking about a champion right now. A guy with a belt at 126. As he comes up through the ranks and finds himself, that's the only way I can describe this fight. Right? Opponents are not going to be ready for this level of speed from a southpaw stance. Let me say this, too. I know people are talking about the next Mayweather. Right? That reminds me of when I was a kid or younger, and people were trying to convince, <laughs> people were trying to convince basketball fans that Harold Miner who won a couple of slam dunk contests, was the next Jordan. They called him Baby Jordan, right? Don't kid yourself. There's only one Floyd Mayweather. Understand, Mayweather's best punch was his non-dominant hand. It's the lead left hook. Mayweather was a righty, right? Mayweather didn't even have to open up, didn't even have to put himself at risk, throwing his dominant hand straight, didn't have to overextend himself. In fighting an opponent, he could stay in a defensive shell and flash a left hook. Now, Stevenson's different. To throw his best punch, which is a straight left, Stevenson has to open up a bit. When Stevenson throws that left hand to the body, I believe a technician like a Canelo would be planning to counter it with a right hand over Stevenson's left of the body. Right? Stevenson has hand speed. Let's not get carried away. He's excellent. He's not Mayweather. Right? The guys who look like Mayweather aren't Mayweather. I'm a big fan of Devin Haney's. I think Haney has a lot of talent. He's not Floyd Mayweather. Probably the person style-wise, offensively at least, who looks the most like Mayweather. Even has to hear trigger left hook is Teofimo Lopez. But understand, Lopez gets hit too much to be considered a Floyd Mayweather. Right? So, Shakur Stevenson's at the point in his career, quite frankly, where even with a belt, he's fighting glorified exhibitions and they're on TV. ESPN. Right? We'll see what happens. I believe he'd have an excellent shot against Leo Santa Cruz. We'll see what happens when he ups his game to fight a Leo Santa Cruz or a Carl Frampton. With this level of talent, he should win both fights. Right? But understand, combination punchers put themselves at risk. They're throwing so many punches that their defensive guard isn't up all the time. You'll notice with Stevenson, let's look at the highlights. As he opens up on a guy, it looks like he's open for counters. 
You'll also notice, too, if he's fighting an opponent like this one, who not only has slower hand speed, but fights at a slower pace than Stevenson. That opponent, if he doesn't have that big punch, the equalizer, that opponent is going to be overmatched. Hand speed mixed with power coming from an unorthodox orientation, southpaw, is a lethal mix. So I'm expecting Stevenson to win this fight by stoppage. Obviously, I'm not going to take 100 to 1 odds. But be careful here. We're coming off of COVID-19. We're coming off of fighters out of the gym, not in sparring, uh, by law required to be in their house. Right? We don't know whether any fighter, Stevenson or any fighter, fighting so soon after the lockdown is going to be sharp. Right? I like Stevenson by KO. Again, he's a world-class fighter. He's a world champion. Fighting a regional fighter who has a day job, who has a loss, who has a baby on the way. With two other kids. Right? If he's in there getting battered by combinations from a guy who has hand speed, presence, an excellent straight left hand, if he's out there getting pummeled, I don't think a soon-to-be dad for the third time at 33 is going to risk his health. Let's face it, too. The ref is going to know that this is a mismatch. Even if you know nothing about the fighters, Let's say I'm a ref from a different country. I, I'm not into boxing, but I enjoy my job. And the first round starts and Stevenson comes over. First, I'm looking at Stevenson. 5'8", hardly any body fat on him. Looks like an athlete, right? I don't even have to know he's a you know, decorated amateur uh, fighter, uh, silver gold medalist. Uh, excuse me, silver Olympic medalist. Then I see the guy popping off combinations. <laughs> I'm going to think to myself, wow, this guy, this guy has a lot of talent, right? If the other guy isn't able to defend himself, if the other guy has never encountered a world-class fighter on a world-class stage like this, with this kind of hand speed, that fighter might be overwhelmed. If I'm the ref and I sense that that fighter doesn't have the power to fight back. How many rounds of that opponent's battering am I going to let pass? I like Stevenson here by KO. I'm not going to play around with 100 to 1 odds and 200 to 1 odds and stuff like that. I understand this is the opportunity of a lifetime for Felix Carabello. I don't mean to diminish it. But I just don't see how he's going to get close to Stevenson. Stevenson's going to dictate everything. The pacing, the distance at which they engage. If Stevenson throws a bunch of punches and gets tired of throwing punches, he can just take a step back. I don't think Carabello moves fast enough to surprise him were he to do so. I like Stevenson here. I'm expecting a stoppage, let me just say. I'm also expecting... ESPN and Stevenson himself to insist on having him fight more meaningful opponents than this going forward. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Stevenson by stoppage. That's how I see it. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Peace.